G'day folks. Well, it's time to dismantle this Spitzer V4 semi-hermetic compressor. Uh, it's been occupying my table for the last week now, and, well, I really need the table back. So, to play along at home, you'll need a Spitzer V4 semi-hermetic compressor or similar model, an assortment of metric tools, and, of course, your favourite Cuban cigar, and a rum and coke. Perfect. This is a red letter day. It's time to uh, do something fun. It's been a while since I've stripped one of these down and most of them have been incomplete. But this is a uh, fully complete compressor. Oh yeah, don't smoke cigarettes, kids. They're bad for you. Only smoke quality Cuban cigars. Nothing wrong with a good Cuban. And that ashtray is actually a 1904 cannon shell base my uh, great-grandfather made that one from a four pounder I think 1905 alright let's go over some components association this is your suction side king valve and low pressure side inside the crankcase and the motor windings and everything uh, for cooling, the re return refrigerant gases are drawn straight through the motor to keep it cool. And you've also got these heat sink pins on it. Uh, obviously that's your electrical terminal box mounting and terminals. The two cylinder heads and the high pressure discharge side which is directed through the heads into a chamber in the top of the crankcase and out through a king valve either on the back or the top. Or you could also, I think you can mount a king valve here as well. These compressors are customizable to your application. Alright, well the bolts on these things are always very tight. But don't use a rattle gun or anything that will just strip heads. Use a nice solid spanner and a bit of force. Cheetah bar will work. Don't even get the rattle guns out or start beating things with hammers that you start stripping heads or threads or break them off. Big one, made by Alco Controls. Use the terminal box as a bolt box, I suppose. oil everywhere if there's oil in the motor compartment. Yep! <laughs> it's going everywhere. Boosted. <laughs> nice and black. Oh, that's a bit messy. <laughs> Good old oil. Yeah, she's uh, suffered a rather bad burnout. That's why the uh, multimeter readings are all over the place. 
here. This is a 9.5 horsepower model for those who wanted to know. That works. Not seized, it's just suffered an electrical failure. Little bits of burnt copper in there. <laughs> ah well, I had a feeling the motor was fried. Those uh, multimeter readings just didn't add up. Not too sure how to get it out though. Well, it seems to have been held in by the end cover. With a bit of luck I might be able to pull the whole thing out as one piece without having to use a hydraulic press. Allen wrench for these. I and mean, everything on these has to be gas tight, so you can expect some pretty tight bolts and good quality gaskets. I would never put one of these back together without a proper torque chart. Tell you what bolts have to be what tension and a new set of gaskets. I mean everything. The reason why I don't rebuild the things expensive. Very expensive, especially when you have to rewind a motor of this horsepower. Yeah, this one's just got that nice warm burnt electric motor smell to it. <laughs> it gets into everything. Good source of uh, cap screws though. Very good source. terminal blocks there for me. Well sealed. You can see there's a looks like a grub screw. They've pinned it in with a punch and they've also pinned the locking key into the stator with a punch. So I've got to remove that grub screw and then try and flatten that out and remove the key and then try and drive the stator out as one piece. Okay now the suction side rear housing for the motor is comprised of a separator with a series of screens for the suction line gases so in theory no crap gets into the motor there's the main gasket and the housing itself oh, and of course the retaining ring for that separator so sit in there then that circlip locks it in place easy. Good little setup. Directs gases directly into the centre of the stator where it has to disperse through the stator and through the core of the rotor. And just yeah, the gas has nowhere to go but through the through the motor absorbing heat. A really good system. <laughs> 